<clears throat> oh, hey! <laughs> Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus Balm video podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. That was just Mac that was gracing us with his presence. And it is February 11th, I believe. It's a Sunday. It's sunny here in New England, and I have an eye exam this afternoon, so I am pumped to get some new glasses. Yeah, it's been a while. I was looking back and thinking about it, and I was last pair of glasses I got, I was still on Steve's insurance, which would have been at least three years ago. So it's been a while. It would be nice to be able to see. I actually drove the other day without my glasses on, and that's a big no-no, I know. <laughs> but I was driving, and you know, I have a stigmatism, I think is what it's called, so I could squint and see pretty well. I guess I just get the angle right with my eye. Anyway, so I was driving without my glasses on, and I thought, can I see better without them on than with them on? So <laughs> it'll be pretty exciting to get a new pair, see how that goes. But it is episode 14, and I have just rambled on about glasses. Um, I am calling this one Colorful Completions. Yep. Hold on. I just remembered I've got something. Okay. A little out of practice doing this every 10 days or so, so there are things I forget and I'm like, oh no, I really needed that. So anyway, so let's just jump in. Colorful completion. Because I've completed some things. Um, let's see. First off the needles were the beloved delivery socks. It only took me six months to knit them, but... Um, these are my first afterthought heel. Definitely a learning experience for me. I did not make them, I made the stripes line up, but I did a different heel on the second one than the first one. I placed the decreases evenly around the heel instead of putting them in the placement of toe decreases so that there were like these two rows. Um, I'll show you the difference between the first and the second. I definitely like the second one better. They are both about a half an inch too long for me, so there's a learning there um, as to when the de decreases should happen. So this is the first one. You can see I did like a toe, um, like the, the ridges of a toe decrease. And then this is the second one. Let me get it a little better on the heel. Um, <coughs> where I did four decreases evenly spaced around the foot, so there's or around the circumference. There's one here, 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 and down here. Um, it definitely makes for a more fitted heel, a little more pointy, I think, but it fits a lot better than the other way. Um, haven't woven in my end yet, need to do that. As I said, they're about half an inch too long in the foot, so I'm hoping house socks, or as I wear them, they'll go down. These are three U's twisted in fiber. What else can I tell you? Size 11 feet, so they're a little loose on the blockers. I haven't washed them yet, so once I do that, they'll fit better, even better. The color is Harry Potter. They both end, you can see I lined them up so that the yellow would be like this Y shape and then down to pink and blue on the tips, which is the opposite of the toes. So yeah, those are done. So that was nice. Um, I immediately cast on for another afterthought heel. So I'm going to apply my learnings about the length of the foot. Of course, toe up. Length of the foot and, um, and rock those out. So I think this even decreases, because you can't feel the, the decrease under your foot. I think that would be the way I do it. And those will be um, a pair of gift socks. So, but for the delivery socks, I wanted to check this out. So I use three U's twisted in fiber, the You Look Great in Stripes Harry Potter colorway, and I grabbed my scale. Um, so they give you 440 yards. Hmm. I have 20 grams left. I don't know. This is a must have been a hundred gram ball. 20 grams left, so that's fifth. So roughly 100 yards left. So I'm thinking baby hat. I think it would be great for a baby hat. So 
uh, a preemie hat or mix in some other color yarn and do a full size baby hat. But we'll see. It's off to the stash with that little bit of yarn. So those are done. Yay! Delivery socks! <laughs> and no, I did not work on them while I was delivering. But uh, this, you can see this bubbly bit I'm wearing is my, oh goodness. I knit on it forever. You remember me talking about it. I'm totally blanking. It's String Theory yarn. It's their cashmere nylon merino blend. Woo! Brain is gone. Let's have some more coffee. Yeah, I don't know. It's a Stephen West pattern. <laughs> That's what I remember about it. Um, yeah. Should have looked that up before I put it on. Anyways, it's really warm. Like, I'm sitting here and my neck is like, ha! Ah, so I might have to take it off. But I wanted to dress up a little bit for you guys. I mean, not just a plain boring blue t-shirt here. So those were the first completed items. The next completed item um, that I finished was the Op Art Blanket by Melissa Dominguez. This was knit using my brand Cottonese that I had in my stash. So it was definitely a stash busting project. You may recall, if you watched the Expectant Knitter podcast back in the day, I knit Roland a Maja baby blanket with this yarn, and I knit him a matching green zebra striped sweater. He's too small for the striped sweater, which I did that on purpose. And the Maja is huge. It's the size of my dining room table, which is probably 36 or 40 by 40. It's big. Um, so we haven't really used that yet. He's not really up to blankets. Like we have one for cuddling, a nice fleecy one that we used, but I don't use many of the knitted blankets. Just an FYI for those of you knitting for expecting moms out there. I don't know if I'm a weird one or what, or maybe we'll start using blankets when we stop swaddling him at night. He still sleeps all swaddled up nice and tight because that's what keeps him from slapping at his face and ripping out his pacifier and all that. So, um, who knows, maybe we'll use it in the future, but in the past we have not used knitted blankets. So anyway, so I knit the Maja and the Maja came out really nice. Um, you know where this is going? I am less thrilled with the finished result of this one. And I, my own fault completely, no fault of the pattern. She warns in the very beginning that the only way to get the optical illusion to really work and to um, lay out flat and nicely is to block the heck out of it. Well, I don't know about you, but I've never had good luck blocking a cotton acrylic blend. So my guess is this is not going to block out well into shape. Um, it's been sitting on the back of a chair, actually Roland's feeding chair. It's been draped over the back of that chair so that when we burp him and he's standing up over our shoulder, he looks at it and he gets so excited and he talks and whoops, here comes the burp, you know? <laughs> but, so it's been getting stretched a little bit on that chair as we lean back on it and it kind of pulls it down, you know how that works. But um, it's definitely not blocked and my ends aren't woven in. Uh, so I think the edge is gonna constantly have this little ripply effect and like you can see that's where the increases were so you end up with this point which is fine, I don't mind it, but I'm, this is not the um, best example of my knitting work that I would like to give to someone. So I'm thinking that since we have not used the Maja, and it's huge, and this is much more of a little lap afghan, a little more cuddle size, I'm gonna say it's about two feet, 24 inches wide, which is what I was shooting for, 24 to 28. Um, I think we're gonna keep this one for us and use it because who cares if the edge is wavy? It's gonna be just as warm and just as well loved. And give the Maja away because that one is a has a nicer finished product to it. So there you go. When I finish this, I immediately cast on for um, another one because, like I said, I had eight or nine skeins of this yarn, the little bits of color left that I wanted to use up. I think I had 10 actually and then I ended up buying five more I don't know anyway so I cast on thinking okay I'll use up the other little bits that I didn't finish off in here some lime green and some more of this yellow I didn't use all the yellow and I 
the more I looked at this laying on the back of the chair and saw that roughly edge and reread the directions and realized cotton is not gonna block so well, I'm thinking I'm gonna rip it out. I can just as easily do um, the same concept of knitting the round, start from the center, but do one that's even increases or increases every other row. I'm not sure what exactly about that makes, which one of those two qualities makes this come out to a point, but yeah. So that's where that is. Or maybe I just won't do anything with it. <laughs> maybe I'm sick of knitting this baby blanket with this yarn, but that's where I'm at right now. So there's another colorful, colorful completion. Done. Off the needles. Dun -dun. So, well, Stephanie, since you've moved two things off your needles, what's currently on your needles? Well, you know, last week when I talked about secret knitting and I was so excited because it was part of the SXK Rebecca Danger knit along. There's a reason why I don't knit toys. I don't like knitting toys. So I got through the body of the little guy I was working on, the body and the head, which are the bigger pieces. And I was knitting with sock yarn on size one, the smallest ones, uh, needles. And it looked really cute and I liked it. And then I started it on the first arm. Those suckers are long, knitting around I-cord, oh, I just couldn't do it. So I put it down. I probably will not finish that, but just didn't want to leave it out there hanging that, hey, she was doing some secret knitting, what is it? So the person I was knitting it for, it was going to be a Valentine's present. Mm -mm, no Valentine's present for me, for them. I bought Steve chocolate instead. Oh. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, no, I did buy him some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I think? I think if I'm gonna have notes, because a lot of times I don't have notes, I need like a bookmarker because I keep looking to see where I am. Here, we'll put this here. This is my bookmarker. So yeah, so that's off the needles. Um, well, it's not off the needles, but it's just hibernating for now. Maybe I'll have a surge of energy and want to go work on 10 inches of I-cord on size one needles. <sighs> Not anytime soon. So that's that. I also cast on, I was feeling the need to, um, one of my friends made Roland these beautiful pillows and she had made me a pillow previously as well. And she does Borgello, that's what it's called. Um, I've never seen anyone else who does it, but she does these beautiful, sort of this hand, she uses yarn to do it and a canvas and then she stitches these beautiful geometric designs all over it and then you know the back is a piece of fabric and she makes a beautiful finished pillow so she's made us a couple of those pillows and I just feel like I would like to do something for her so I thought I might knit her a pair of socks but then the more I thought about it it was like well I don't know if she'd wear them and that's a lot of work to put into it and they're sort of a delicate item so maybe I won't do socks I guess I could have used Reggie and that wouldn't have been delicate those are you know substantial if they go in the dryer they'll be fine but um, yeah so I taught myself out of that and then I thought well pillows are sort of house items so what do I what could I do for a house item and I thought well maybe I'll make her a lacy pillow like here's a pillow for me for your pillows but then she's giving away pillows because she makes them and she's happy to give them away and so often as knitters we make projects and it's like I just want to give this to someone so that I can make another one. So pillow, probably not a great idea. And so I was running the idea up of, or bouncing the idea off of Steve. <laughs> can you see Linus? <laughs> okay, maybe. <laughs> shoot, shoot. Um, I was running the idea off of Steve, bouncing the idea off of Steve. And he said, well, how about dishcloths? You know, that's a home item that you can whip out a whole bunch and it it's nice and they're pretty and I thought oh, okay it's useful so if she doesn't like them at least she can use them and they're useful versus you know I knit her a pair of socks and she doesn't like the color and so then she never wears them I don't know it just seemed a little better and all of the dishcloths in our kitchen are crap so we need some new ones too so I pulled out a bunch of kitchen cotton that I had in the stash and I just started knitting you know the standard grandma's dishcloth pattern um, I I'm a loose knitter and I've noticed with my dishcloths, is he totally, I don't know. <laughs> um, 
I notice with my dishcloth that the looser knit ones tend to stretch out and get smelly and look dingy a lot faster than the real tight knit ones. So the pattern on the ball band calls for a size seven needle. I went down to a size five thinking that would help. And they are, they're very, very smooshy and plush. So here's the first one. I can bang one of these out probably, I wanna say four hours. So like two naps, two of Roland's naps and it's finished. Sorry, cat interruption. At least he's not a yippie dog. Not that there's anything wrong with yippie dogs. Although Steve does laugh when I'm watching podcasts and he hears the dog yipping. He'll hear it downstairs when I'm upstairs in the bedroom. He's like, hey, you watching that show? Because <laughs> he's learned which podcasts have dogs on them. Or, so, anyways, um, we love the dogs. Don't take the dogs away. So I did a solid red one and I did this um, ombre variegated peach to brown to cream. I am almost finished with this, this like a washed out denim and yellow one. Uh, I'm gonna do a peach one. I have a brown neutral variegated one. I have this one that is blue green stripes. So I, I don't know how that will look. And then here are my leftovers after the first two. Knit exactly the same. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a huge difference in the size. And I checked on the ball bands. Who knew that the variegated, um, variegated ones have, I think, 92 yards, 90 something, 95 yards per skein. And the solid ones have 120 yards per skein. That's 25 yards difference. That's pretty big in terms of getting two dishcloths out of one skein. So I'm not sure that there's enough there for a second one. Um, we'll see, here's my other, this one looks bigger. This one looks more on, on par with the red, maybe not. So we'll see how far I can go instead of doing what the pattern calls for, uh, knitting up to a 52 inch, 52 stitch width. I might drop it down to like 50 when I do my next variegated ones that have the smaller Game. So I thought I could give her a nice matching set. Probably these go the best together, but uh, give her a handful of those. And of course we stock my kitchen too while I'm at it. So every once in a while, you know, it's, I feel like a, I feel like dishcloths are sort of a cop out, but at the same time, that is the most hands down useful thing that I knit. You know, you can use it year in, I mean, all year long. I always have one of these in my sink. That's what we use to wash our dishes. Like, they're more useful than a pair of socks. And cotton's super cheap. It's not the greatest thing to knit with, but I feel like it's sort of like, 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 like. <laughs> Knitting is my fun hobby, but I can do something useful, so why not? So, I don't know, whip out a few more dishcloths. And then, I forgot to write this down. Um, the best knit along. So, you know me. I'm a deadline knitter. I like things organized and chop, 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 chop. But I found that the knit alongs are not working out that way. <laughs> so, I know I promised you February 15th would be the end date for this knit along. And it can be. Um, yeah. It can be the end, but I'm not going to be done, and I'm going to keep knitting on my vests until they are done. So, um, up to you. I guess not up to you. Up to me. <laughs> I'm just not very good at the knit-along thing, I guess. I don't know. I found lately that I have so little free time that I feel somewhat disconnected from the knitting world because I'm not sitting on, on Ravelry chatting it up in the forums, and I'm not checking out all my friends' projects, and I, I really have very little idea of what is going on outside of my own little knitting universe, so, which has become very small. Maybe I should say my own little knitting planet, because it's not a universe anymore. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, the knit-along, I would love to do knit-alongs, but I'm, I love the thought, but the execution is less than ideal. So, um, it can be closed. It can keep going. I guess I'm going to say it'll keep going, but I don't want to let you down if you were waiting for the prize drawing and you completed a vest in, um, in January and you're like, come on, finish it up. So we will do a prize drawing on the next podcast 
right? The next time I broadcast, after the 15th, I will do a prize drawing for everyone who has posted a finished object in the thread. But I'm going to leave the thread open and we can keep talking or chatting or not. <laughs> Whatever the case may be. So, that's where that's at. Um, I was working on this, what I'm calling the copper boy vest, I think. Copper vest. Anyways, I it's my own design. I have cast on and ripped out three times for this thing. So I'm like, if I hadn't, if I didn't have to keep ripping back or ripping out the initial cast on, I would have three finished vests because I get so mad after I rip out that I don't want to keep going. And so it sits for two weeks until I'm like, okay, fine, I should work on that. So this is um, Superwash Valley Yarns and this past week I had to rip back to here to where I split off for the armholes because it was about four inches too wide. It was going to be a... I wanted a 20 two inch chest and it was going to be a 30 inch chest and I didn't have enough yarn to carry that down and the armholes wouldn't have been the right depth for a 30 inch chest like it would have been really tight so I went back cast on the right amount kept going I shortened the amount of garter under the arm so it's really just this little bit of edging about three quarters of an inch below the armhole with garter and then straight stocking up for the body um, I had this idea in my head that I wanted to do a little bit of color work on the lower left side of it. And so, and I had this, oh, it's going to be perfect, beautiful. I'm going to do the Norwegian snail mitten, the snail part of that pattern. Can you see it on the bottom of the snail? I thought I would do that on the bottom of this in a nice navy blue. It would be high contrast. That's from Knitter's Book of Yarn by Clara Parks. Um, I thought it would be wonderful and so that sort of gave me the push I needed to like motor along and get through this. Sorry I've got like let me pick at everything today um, and I did and it did. I, what happened? Why does my color work look so wonky lately? I don't know and I used three different strands of the teal color so that I wouldn't have to be pulling my floats back over more than five or six stitches because I didn't want it to go too far but really that looks like crap right <laughs> like I know it does I showed it to Steve and he was like is it a flower so here's the snail I did a bit of leaf like a stem with some leaves coming off it it just ugh, it's not ideal but you know what I decided he's six well he's five months and a week old um, and this will fit him very soon before the winter's over, he'll be wearing this. He really doesn't care what's on the bottom of his vest. So I'm just gonna finish it because <laughs> I'm sick of ripping this thing out. So it is what it is. It's sort of a blue geometric blob at this point, but oh well. Um, that color is the Mission Falls. I don't know if you can see it. It's a really deep teal. I love that color. I think, no. It's not. I used Mission Falls, but I used a green for Steve's Claudia hat. Um, I don't think I've actually used that yarn anywhere. I have a whole bunch of it, though. I, it's discontinued. I think it's the 136. I don't know. Whatever it is, I really like that color. It's in my stash if you're that curious. I doubt you are, though. So it's coming along. I just started, like, from here. To there I've started the garter stitch again so I'll do an inch of garter oh that might be short now that I'm looking at it no no I'll do an inch of garter at the bottom this is how much I have left and then bind off and call it up maybe I'll go longer maybe I'll go until it's done because I'm gonna be left with this weird little bit of copper and I don't know how well you can see it the light in here might not be great but this is definitely an orange vest so that's my vest. I um, set out to knit three vests for the knit along. I did the, ooh, I forgot that. I did the Pembroke and I did the Oz vest. I have not done the Owl vest, so I'm going to keep chugging away slowly on my vest and do that. So, um, 
So can you see this over here, sitting next to me? Yes, this is a lovely fleece blanket that our friend Lori knits with bears made for Roland. Um, it's one of those tassely ones, so one side is red fleece, it's huge, and the other side is this green baby frog fleece. I love it! He loves it. The other night, um, we were laying on the bed reading a story underneath it, and the whole time I was reading, he was you know, playing on the tassels and putting them in his mouth and pulling on them and it was great. It was the contrast of the red and the green is really great for him. So thank you very much, Lori. I'm sure we will use this for many years to come. We love it. So, so that came in the mail this week and then um, a little while ago, my in-laws got me a gift certificate to the Loopy U. It was a rather generous gift certificate and it was going to expire so I needed to use it so I had been saving it thinking I would get yarn for some big project that I really wanted to make. Hold on one second. So I had been, oops, okay. So I had been saving it for um, getting a sweater's worth of yarn or something for a big project that I really wanted to make and I just none of the yarns were speaking to me and I thought well I love string theory right and the reason I love it is it's well I love their camper sock sorry I think <laughs> I love their camper sock but it's a MCN that's what you call it right merino nylon cashmere blend and so I thought why don't I order a, a few different merino nylon cashmere blends and see how I like them and so that's what I did yarns I've never heard of before well except one so I did buy one skein of caper sock because you know couldn't resist. so this is the agave color right here it's a beautiful aqua green color yeah they have a new label too so i got a skein of that and theirs is 80 percent superwash merino 10 percent cashmere and 10 percent nylon 400 yards for theirs for 26. um and then i got handmaiden i've never used hers before her casbah which is 81 percent merino 9 percent cashmere 10 percent nylon and this is, oh, she puts it in meters, 225 meters. They don't agree with each other. <laughs> 225 meters. So I think it was close. When I was picking them, I was shooting for over 350 yards. So I don't know. This is color pewter. This is, I don't know how well you can see it. It's like a um, taupe, taupey gray purple I don't know it's one of those colors that has you can tell there were like four or five different colors that went into it but then the overall effect is that it looks like a gray yarn when you look at it so I think it will make a beautiful shawl with these like shimmery bits of different color that like the purpley section here that'll show up so it's beautiful it is called pewter and it is casbah by handmaiden so hopefully i will knit something wonderfully luscious out of that and <coughs> oh excuse me and then i got fiber file i've never heard of this before um she's beautiful labels it's all about the color and so this is her mcn Lux socks it is 375 yards 80 percent superwash 10 percent cashmere 10 percent nylon um, this is the colorway Envy. It is a great green um, lime. You can tell there are hints of like it was yellow and it's just neon green now. Oh, it's beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. I don't know how it would look next to my skin this color, but it's it's lovely. I can't wait to use this one. Um, I don't know if I'm most excited about this one. This was definitely my second second choice. So it was a surprise. That's the one I like second. And then this is the one I like first, and I've never heard of them either. Alicia goes around. Oh my god, what an, a stunning dye job she did. This is the Panoply of Peacock's fingering. Panoply. Panoply. 80% superwash 10, 10, 360 yards. It is called 
delicious. <laughs> it is delicious. I don't know if that's what it's called or not, but she has a great little tagline. Knit happy, knit healthy, knit fat, knit, knit early, knit often. And she has a website, aliciagoesaround.com. Um, love this color. It is a like a black teal or a black aqua green. It is much darker than the string theory. Great highs and lows in it. Lots of variation. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's, I can't wait to knit with it. It's delicious. Maybe that'll be my next shawl because it's so beautiful. So... That also came in the mail this week, and thank you to my in-laws for pushing me outside of my comfort zone and encouraging me to order from the Loopy U. I've never done that before, so hopefully I'll become one of these Loopy groupies and do another order, but in the meantime, I have beautiful NCM yarn, so that's that. And then, last but not least, let's have a 12 in 12 update. Um, as you remember, So the goal was to knit 12 tops for Roland, 12 pairs of socks not for me, 12 shawls, and knit down the stash in some way. Because this is definitely helping me get lower on the stash. <laughs> but you can't go cold turkey. At least I can't. If I go cold turkey, I'll go crazy and buy five sweaters worth. So it's good to buy just little bits to keep you going. Um, so sock front. No socks for other people. But I have two pairs on the needles right now that are for other people. So if I work I can finish those off. Um, the tops for Roland I finished the Oz vest. I'm working I'm almost done that copper boy vest and that will be two tops for him out of the 12. Um, for the 12 shawls I finished the hitchhiker shawl which you don't live with me or near me but I seem to wear it every other day. I absolutely love that shawl. I was out at a uh, an exhibition event <laughs> And the woman came up to me and said, is that a hitchhiker? So she totally recognized it, which made me super happy. I don't know how she knew, but I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you don't expect someone to talk to you about your knitting places just like out in the general public. So, uh, so one shawl. And um, in terms of knitting down the stash, the blanket, the dishcloth, and then both of the vest, the Oliver vest, the green vest, the Pembroke vest, the vest, 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 the Oz, and now the Copper Boy, all of those are coming out of stash yarn, so I'm doing pretty well in laying it down. I bet I'm about flush after these go in and that comes out. So that is my 12 in 12 update, and I think that's all I've got for you today. I hope you are having a great time knitting and feeling lots of joy and wonder and love this time of year ah! <laughs> and i will catch you next time have a great february until then okay bye